Well, happy Thanksgiving. Hey, you guys did the best. Every other service, it was like a three-second silence. And then I had to re we'll redo it again for all of you who are distracted. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, gosh, what a sweet moment we had. This past weekend, I was in Eau Claire with my husband. We decided um, to get a little weekend away. It was probably the first one we've had just, just me and him actually focusing on our relationship um, for, in a long time. And so we heard about this worship night at Jacob's Well Church in Eau Claire. And so we're like, let's go to this worship night. We don't have to plan anything for it. We can just show up and experience what, what God is doing in this church body. And it was a really great experience. They did some awesome music. They had some prayer time, some scripture. It was, it was just beautiful to gather with the church that isn't our church, but our church just the same. And then on Sunday, we decided to attend Movement Church, with it, which if you don't know what that church is, it is a church we planted in 2020 from, it used to be Red Cedar Eau Claire, it was a campus, and then we, they became autonomous in 2020, and they have survived COVID, and they are doing well. And so we went and checked in on them, they have their own building and everything, and it was a great service full of love. It was warm and welcoming. There was great coffee. It was beautiful. We got prayed over. I got to see some long lost friends. It was, it was just a good weekend for us to be able to be poured into by other Christians that they're not getting anything from me. I'm just attending one time visiting, but they loved us and prayed over us and cared for us in such a way that filled me with gratitude. And so today I just want to say thank God for the church. Thank God for the global capital C church. We are not alone in this fight against the enemy. We are not alone in discipleship and fellowship. We have this huge scope of believers that are alongside us, walking the faith with us. We make up this one body intricately connected together for a divine purpose, all contributing our unique giftings and abilities, resources, time, energy, and focus so that we can build each other up in love and to reach that love of Jesus out through us to a broken and hurting world. And when we live this out through the power of the Holy Spirit, the church is a bright light of hope and a force to be reckoned with. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16 Say, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Now, you guys, all of us, were the saints. And did you notice it didn't say he gave all those people to do ministry? It said to equip you all to do the work of the ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craft craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined together by every joint with which it is equipped." When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. All of us making up this one body have what we need. When each part is working properly, it builds, we build each other up so that we can grow fully in love, to full maturity in Christ. So we can reflect the fullness of Jesus as best as we can here on earth. I started this sermon series five weeks ago talking about how we get to decide where our focus lands, where our heart goes. Every situation we face in life, there's often a good part and there's some hard parts. And we can land in the good parts and be filled with thankfulness for what we have or we can land in the bitterness and the sadness and the pain of what is going wrong or what we don't have. We get to choose where our focus lands and often where our focus lands is where our hearts land. But the good news is that even if you land over here in bitterness or anger or frustration or complaining, you can shift your heart back through the act of choosing thankfulness, of doing it, walking that out. But before we go on and talk about how thankful I am for the church, 
I want to come back to that point of where you can focus on. Because church hurt is a real thing that a lot of us have experienced. Maybe every single one of us have experienced some level of church hurt. Maybe you felt rejected by a church community. Maybe a leader in a church really hurt you. You felt used or cast away, disowned. Maybe you were working alongside a friend and um, they broke trust. Maybe you were leading someone else and they betrayed you. Maybe you experienced physical abuse or other kinds of abuse within the church body. And it hurts a little bit more because we are supposed to be the reflection of Jesus. And it starts to get skewed in our hearts and minds when we feel that way from someone who is supposed to reflect Christ. It can feel like that is Jesus. That is what Christianity is. Let me tell you, that is not what it's supposed to be. And I am sorry on behalf of whoever it was that hurt you. I'm sorry that that happened. And if it was me, please come talk to me because I want to seek unity and reconciliation no matter what. This hurt is real and it needs to be dealt with. And so if you're feeling stuck in bitterness and you feel like you can't get in with the church, or you're not sure if you want to be a part of the church, Christian church culture, because you've been hurt, I strongly encourage you to talk to wise counsel, get help dealing with it because that bitterness and unforgiveness is not for you. It's not for you. You need to be able to let that go. And sometimes, oftentimes, we need other believers to help us, to help us move past that. And so the prayer team is always up here. They would love to pray over you and just invite the Holy Spirit to help you release that and heal from that. Um, Otherwise, I could direct you to some wise counsel that I've found in my life that will help you walk through it. But seek that out. Don't stay in that bitterness. Don't stay in that hard part. Seek the good in the church because it's all around. It is. Don't let the hurt stop you from seeing what God is doing. So we're not going to dive deep into that today, but I did want to acknowledge that because I know some people, are their wounds are fresh or their wounds are big. And it's going to be hard to be thankful for the church when, you're, when, you, when I have not acknowledged that. So I'm not acknowledging that, and it's important to deal with, but we're going to just, as best as we can, set that aside today and, and try and focus on being thankful for the church. So we're going to start with the church that went before. I am grateful that we didn't have to start this movement. I'm grateful it wasn't me because if you look at the people who started this with Jesus alongside him, the apostles, all 12 of them, pretty much except one, were killed for their faith in horrible ways. I looked it up, and they're pretty creative ways that these people were in various ways killed for their faith, for boldly professing the gospel. And we are not alone in this. So many men and women have walked before us, paving the way for the ministry that we get to do now. We don't even know what prayers were spoken, what cries were poured out on our behalf, on the church, on bringing the kingdom down to earth, that we get to see the fruit of ministry because that person took the time to get on their knees and pray to God that he would move. And we just get to reap the blessings and the fruit of that today. The church that went before has paved the way for the ministry of today. Hebrews 12, verses 1. I'm just going to do verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. This race is hard. Walking with the Lord is not easy. And you're going to get pulled and attacked by the enemy but we are not alone. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, all the people who went before us, all the believers, and they're encouraging us and cheering us on, and then we have each other today to keep helping us persevere in the walk that we started with the Lord. I'm thankful for people who laid down their full lives on the altar of Jesus, said, whatever you ask, wherever you call me, I will go, and I will do whatever you say. Because I know that whatever you have for me is better than anything I could come up with on my own. I'm thankful for people who sacrifice their very lives for the gospel. There's a testimony of a man called Jim Elliott and his four missionary friends. You may have heard of it. But I'm just going to read you a summary of what happened in in this man's experience. Jim Elliott, along with four of his missionary colleagues, 
were killed on January 8, 1956, while trying to establish contact with the Alca Indians in Ecuador, now known as the Wodani people. Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, Ed McCauley, Pete Fleming, and Roger Udarian had been working to make friendly contact with the Alca tribe, which they had seen from the air. Though they had only met one tribesman face to face, they had participated in trades with the Alca from a plain to ground system. When Elliot and his friends landed on a river beach on that fateful January day, they were slaughtered by the waiting men. Their deaths were not in vain, though. The widows continued to try and make peaceful contact and eventually won the hearts of the tribe. God has used this recent missionary martyr story to inspire new generations of missionaries willing to give their lives for what they believe. Did you catch who completed that? Their widows. They could have said, forget you. How dare you wreck our family? But they took up the call and went themselves knowing the risk. And that is where they won them over for the gospel. And it's inspired numerous other people to go after what God calls them to, no matter the cost. I am thankful for the church that went before, and I am thankful for the church in my own story. The people who went before me and who have coached me and encouraged me and guided me through the messy years, the crazy childhood years. We would beg people for money in the lobby to go to the milk pail back when I was a child. And they had so much grace for our begging or uh, the drama that would happen uh, with whatever boy had just broken my heart. And all these people, as I really thought about it, just filled me with gratitude for the men and women who had been with me and been patient and caring and seen me and cared enough to speak truth and life into me. I thought about my grandparents who did not grow up as Christians but accepted Christ when my father was a young child. Um, they went to this assembly that my great aunt had invited them to and one by one all came forward to the altar just passing, they're holding a baby and just passed the baby down so that they could keep going up. And just one by one and it set off this new trajectory for our entire family and I don't even know how many prayers my grandfather prayed for my father, for my mother, and for me that I am now standing in today. I have no clue, but I do know that he spent hours and hours praying at his bedside, interceding for me and for my family and for my, my cousins and aunts and uncles. For my grandparents on my mother's side, my grandfather would would faithfully serve every Sunday on the tech team, he would do sound. And it's kind of funny, because now my husband runs our production ministry and runs sound almost every weekend. Who would have thought? I thought about my parents, who raised me up in a Christian home. And not just that, but modeled what it looked like to consistently and persistently serve the church, even when the tough times came. And there have been a lot of hard times a lot of pain, a lot of friendships lost, a lot of transitions. We have walked through many of them, but they have consistently showed up and served and loved the best that they could. And they were example to me so that by the time I was a teenager, it was just normal to serve the church. It was a normal part. Plus they bribed me with pizza and that always helped. The pastors and Sunday school teachers and the youth leaders that I grew up with, I can remember so many of them, but Sherry Dean was my children's ministry teacher. I was her favorite, I like to believe. I don't know if that was true, but she made me feel like I was her favorite. And I remember her being there every week and teaching us and listening to us and answering our questions. And Krista and Craig Cooper were, um, he was one our lead pastor at the time, and I remember he wrote me a letter of encouragement, just calling out leadership in me that I was not, had no clue what he was talking about. My youth pastor, Brandon Willis, who stayed with us all the way through from 6th grade to 12th grade and would invite us into his home and uh, take us on mission trips and put up with all of our weirdness. And uh, Carrie Meyer was my youth leader who would sit and listen to hours, hours of crying and 
and complaining in the same drama over and over again because it was always about like the same person. And uh, Ron Stone was a leader for all of my years and he would bring the concessions candy, but he would also, he took this group of kids that were kind of on the outside, didn't really um, know everybody, but they had their own group. And he took them in stride and discipled them and just was there for them no matter what they threw at him. I think of Jeff and Heather Semple who called out further leadership. Jeff was the first person to call out that I was going to be a worship leader and I was still doing kids ministry, had no plan of that and he called it out one day after a worship night and I was honestly surprised but it started this this thought process in me that moved me in the direction of where I am now and I had, there were people like Jim and Bonnie Ricky who Jim said I was going to preach one day and I said, no, you are nuts. It's not going to happen. And Emily Shepley also did the same thing. She got me on stage and said, you're going to preach a sermon. And I was like, what? Here we go. I was like, I'll do 15 minutes. She said, no, you're going to do 30. <laughs> and taught me how to do it. Just so many people that took the time to model Christ, to encourage, and to build me up in love, sometimes having hard conversations, to refine me and get me to a place where I am today and who are going to continue to walk alongside me to get me where I'm going to be in 10 years and 20 years. People praying for me, encouraging me, my husband who models authenticity and honesty and vulnerability even when it's extremely painful and it will require steps of growth that are hard to take. But he does it anyway. Who are those people in your own story? Who are the people who have taken the time, they've taken their gifts, they have seen you and intentionally spoken truth and love to you to help build you up to the creation, the beautiful creation that God intended you always to be. Who are those people? Thank God for the church in your own story. And I thank God for the church right now, which is us in this room. And I thank God for the other churches in this area. There are so many I couldn't even count. I was trying to think through them all. There are so many and I'm grateful because that means that we're not alone. We're not gathering right now by ourselves. There are people gathering globally, nationally, all together to lift up the name of Jesus. And as long as Jesus is their Lord and Savior, we're on the same team. We're on the same path together to fight for the great commission and to love like the great commandment, to love God and to love others. Let's look at Ephesians, the chapters 15 and 16 one more time. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. We get to participate in God's work through each other and for each other. We get to encourage and refine one another, and we get to experience God together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read through a list of verses, because this is our final week of Thank God. And we're just going to take time to really consider gratitude. I'm going to read a list of almost all the verses from this whole series and then I'm going to leave a little space for you to consider these words. And then we're going to worship and give testimonies and worship some more. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. For this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, 
the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. <laughs>